What are the valence orbitals of an unhybridized atom? What are the valence orbitals of an unhybridized atom? That's the kind of question students almost never know what I'm talking about, but I think when I write it on the board, you'll, you'll see what I'm saying. What are the valence orbitals of an unhybridized atom? Well, do you remember from chemistry that if something is unhybridized, it simply has one s orbital and three p orbitals. So that's what I meant by the valence orbitals of an unhybridized atom. These are the orbitals of an unhybridized atom. Now, what about if you're sp3 hybridized? What are your valence orbitals then? An s and three p's. Let's try to spell that out a little bit more. Okay. So what, what we're seeing here is um, most students don't really know what it means to be sp3 hybridized. So we now, now we know how to figure out whether something's sp3 hybridized, but now we have to figure out what that means. Okay, well, um, basically hybridization is just mixing. So the analogy I like is, let's say that in your cupboard, you've got four bottles of juice. You got a bottle of strawberry and three bottles of pear juice. Well, you could hybridize these by mixing them together, basically. Um, so one thing we could do is we could make some sp3 juice. How do we make sp3 juice? Well, we pour all of our bottles into the blender. We pour the one strawberry bottle into the blender and the three pear bottles into the blender. Uh, and then we mix them all up. Now, how many bottles worth of blended juice will that give us? Four. four. If you put four bottles into the blender, then four bottles will come out of the four bottles worth will come out of the blender, and they will all be sp3 juice. We won't have any unmixed pear juice left because we poured it all into the blender. So this was the answer to my question. I asked you, what would be the valence orbitals of an sp3 hybridized atom? And the answer is there would be four sp3 orbitals. There would be no unhybridized orbitals left. That's like having no unmixed bottles of juice left in your cupboard. A lot of students don't realize that when something is sp3 hybridized, that guarantees that it has four sp3 orbitals. Something we used here is what we could call the conservation of orbitals. Notice that we were mixing, we were hybridizing four orbitals, so we produced four hybridized orbitals. The number of orbitals that you hybridize equals the number of hybridized orbitals you produce. That's just common sense if you think about the juice analogy. The number of bottles of juice you put into the blender is equal to the number of bottles of juice that, of worth of juice you'll get out of the blender, as long as there's not like a leak in the blender. All right, well now I'm going to ask you, what are the valence orbitals of an sp2 hybridized atom? Three sp2 orbitals. Anything else? What are the valence orbitals of an sp2 hybridized atom? I don't know. Okay, you're on the right track. That was good so far. So what are we doing now? Let's think about the juice analogy. Now we're opening up our cupboard and we're taking the strawberry bottle and we're taking two bottles of pear juice and we're pouring those all into the blender. Well, what type of juice are we gonna get out of the blender? We're gonna get juice that's one part strawberry and two parts pear. And how many bottles worth of that are we gonna get out of the blender? Well, since we put three bottles in, we're getting three bottles out. Again, that's conservation of orbitals. Since we're mixing three orbitals, we get three mixed orbitals out. But do we have any unhybridized orbitals left over? Well, yeah, this is the bottle we didn't put into the blender. So that's still in our cupboard. In this case, this is what the number two represents here. We're only mixing together two of our original three P orbitals. It's like putting on, pulling only two bottles of pear juice off of the cupboard. That leaves one unmixed bottle still in the cupboard. Well, that still exists. So this is another way that our orbitals are conserved. We started with four total orbitals, and we have to end up with four total orbitals. Again, that's like the juice analogy. If you start with four bottles of juice in the cupboard, and you put some of them into the blender, you're going to end up with four bottles worth of juice. Again, unless there's a leak in the blender, you're not going to lose any juice. OK, so this is, again, something that students tend not to realize. They don't realize that when they say something is sp2 hybridized, what they're really saying is that it has exactly three sp2 orbitals and that it still has an unhybridized p orbital left over. That's why you have to know what the original orbitals were so you can see what's left over over here.
Well, logically speaking, now we should make some SP juice. Now we should ask, what are the valence orbitals of an SP, hybridized atom? So that's two SP orbitals and then two P orbitals. Now you got it. Good. So now we're just taking one bottle of strawberry juice and one bottle of pear juice. So if you wanted to, we could say that SP could really be written like this. One bottle of the, the strawberry and one bottle of pear. But it's taken for granted that if you don't put in the number, you mean one. So we're just taking the one strawberry bottle and the one pear. Well, if we put two bottles worth of juice into the blender, that's going to produce two bottles worth of blended juice. And it's going to be 50% strawberry and 50% pear. Uh, and then we still have two bottles of pear juice that we haven't touched. So we're going to have two unmixed, unhybridized bottles of pear juice. So these are the, really the only possibilities for hybridization that you're going to see this term. In organic chemistry, we don't really worry about hybridizing, say, d orbitals. So these are the only cases we're going to have to worry about here. So again, there's no exceptions to this. Anything that's sp hybridized has exactly two sp orbitals and two unhybridized p orbitals left over. Um, so by the way, um, which of these types of juice would have the most strawberry taste? The sp orbital. Because this is 50% strawberry. This is only 33% strawberry, and this is only 25. Actually, it was kind of a trick question. The one that has the most strawberry taste is the unmixed. All right, because this is pure strawberry, that was an inadvertent trick question. But of all the hybridized orbitals, the one that has the most strawberry taste is this. Well, let's forget about the analogy. Which of these types of hybridized orbitals has the most S character? SP. Yeah, because it has 50% S. Which of the hybridized orbitals has the most P character? SP3. Right. Of course, the one with the most P character is the unmixed P. All right, and that would make sense in terms of our, our juice analogy as well. This is three parts pear juice and only one part strawberry juice, so it makes sense it should have most of the, it would be most similar to pear juice. Let's think about geometry. Do you remember what, what does an S orbital look like? Um, it's a uh, like sphere. Yeah. This isn't really what the S stands for, but we can imagine that S stands for spherical. Do you remember what the geometry of a P orbital is? It's like two, like a figure eight. You got it. That's right. <laughs> Figure eight. Very good. Dumbbell shape. Let's think about an unhybridized atom. It has three p orbitals. Do you remember what is the relationship in space of the three p orbitals to each other? How are they oriented to each other? Um, isn't there like a plane between? I'm not sure. <laughs> so they're all perpendicular to each other. Okay. So if we have a single atom, here would be one of its p orbitals. And we would draw another p orbital like this, perpendicular to the first one. And then where can we put the third p orbital? Well, that would have to be coming into the board and out of the board, so that's hard to draw. But that would be the only way that we could get three p orbitals that are all perpendicular. So this isn't what it really stands for, but we could imagine that p stands for perpendicular. All the p orbitals on a single atom are always perpendicular to all the other p orbitals on that same atom. P orbitals on a, on a single atom are always perpendicular to each other. So I can't draw the third one, but it's going into and out of the board like my chalk. Kind of a desperation move sometimes people might do something like this if we understand that this is really coming out of the board towards us and this is pointing into the board away from us. So the angle between any pair of P orbitals on the same atom is 90 degrees. They're all perpendicular to each other. Good. Do you know what the angle is between these sp3 orbitals? Or what shape do they take? If something is sp3 hybridized, what type of geometry will the orbitals take? Tetrahedral. That's right. So this is something you're likely to be tested on, orbital and molecular geometry. So um, these want to kind of get far away from each other. And a good way to get far away from each other is to form a four-cornered figure in three-dimensional space. So this would form a tetrahedron. Uh, and the angle between um, the orbitals in the tetrahedron is 109.5. And that's worth memorizing, 109.5. Okay, here we have only three hybridized orbitals. What's going to be the angle between these three hybridized orbitals? Let's forget about the P for a second. 
Or do you just know what shape three sp2s would take to get spread out from each other? Is it trigonal planar? Yeah, that's right. There's only three of them, so we don't need the third dimension. Planar means flat. The angle between any two hybridized orbitals would be 120. That's right. Now, what would be the relationship of the p orbital to these? Well, remember the p orbitals are perpendicular to all the other p orbitals. Well, these contain p orbitals, so this would be perpendicular to these as well. So I actually should have said that. P orbitals are not just perpendicular to other p orbitals. They're also perpendicular to any hybridized orbitals on the atom. So again, you could think that p stands for perpendicular. P orbitals on a single atom are perpendicular to any other p orbitals and any other hybridized orbitals on that same atom. 